I, I don't I don't know if I want to just sit here and complain about complainers. Is that is that an ethical thing to do, George? To complain about do people want to hear you complain about people complaining about things that they shouldn't complain about? Well, I Well, if if I mean, have you ever wanted to Well, that's true. But what about Okay, so let me ask you this. What were they doing? Well, did they tell you what they were doing about it? I mean, no, of course not. Of course not. But no, because complainers just want to complain. If they do something about it, then they can't complain anymore. So there's, there's, right. I, I don't know. My, the thing I would complain about is people not respecting my time or their t- just anyone's time you know a- asking me to drive all over you know here or there to give me a maybe appointment yeah okay i you know um i think i think that i have my own answer i think i just answered my own question well because no I, if, if you if you want me to you know I, I have a friend and i went and you know talked to someone a while back and the person told me, come here at this time and come at that time. And then uh, I'll, I'll see you and we can do whatever. And then I waited for the person literally seven hours. And then the person, oh, I was busy. And the person said, uh, well, come back another time and maybe I can do something. I was like, well, you know, when you're serious, call me. I think that I'm going to say that. You've, you've, you've got to... Well, okay, you've got your friends you need to be patient with, right? Maybe they're they're people that complain about stuff and they don't do anything about it. And we're all learning because you were like that way once yourself, right? Well, I mean, I don't know how to give advice because I don't know that I'm an expert on this. I mean, I'm an expert in knowing the problem. I don't know if I'm an expert in solving the problem for other people. I mean, it, in theory, you need to be an expert on solving the problem yourself. You know, I, I guess I, if someone's upset about something, if someone's sad, it's not for you or I to say, get over it. I mean, I, you know, sometimes people, well, there was this one preacher, uh, Bishop Sherwood Carthen. I think Bishop was his title or whatever. I don't know how that works, but he, he said, you know, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been through. And so maybe you should just shut up, he says, because you don't know where I am. And he was he was talking about people who say, well, I don't know. It takes all of that. I don't know that that's necessary. And that that was his sermon. It was his, goes back to maybe 2003. You know, it was Grand Rapids First Assembly. And so he's, you know, going on about how, uh, how when he's, he said, I need the Lord to deliver me from people who don't have any problems. So it's really easy to sit on the outside and tell other people that they shouldn't complain. Don't ever be that guy. I, I pray that I'm never that guy. I try not to be. Someone's having a bad day. Okay, they're having a bad day. But my question to them is, are you doing something about it? And I don't tell them, okay, you're having a bad day. Are you doing something about it? I'll be quiet. I'll be kind. I'll listen. But I will politely yet firmly ask them, okay, I want to know what you're doing about this. Are you doing something about this? And guide them into that question of action. People who are sad and oppressed don't need to just have a shoulder to cry on. They need action to take. If they're not interested in taking action, then they shouldn't be crying. I There's this uh, communication thing, and, and it's rumored to be only something that women do. And I, I tell you, if it's something only women do, then uh, there are a lot of men who seem to have me fooled. I run into a lot of people who talk about a problem and I'll start problem solving and they get mad at me because I'm not listening. I'm like, well, I am listening and you know that I'm listening because I have solutions. And they're like, I just want to talk. Wait, no, you don't.
What was, it was a TV show I was watching recently. Some guy had anger issues and, and he was going off into virtual reality to, to beat people up, to let out his anger. And I think that the, that the TV show was purporting that as a way to solve the problem. And it doesn't. It actually increases the addiction. Talking about your problem without consciously making a concerted effort to solve your problem just makes you addicted to complaining. So I, I don't, I, I want to have a reputation with my friends. If they need to talk about something, I'll listen. If they need to just be and be free and share ideas, I'll listen. But if it's complaining, if it's complaining, I will tell them, I hear the problem and I agree with you, but I'm much more interested in what you think the solution is. And if they've got, you know, five pounds of problem for one ounce of solution, I'll take that. I, I'll tell if, if you need to paint an accurate picture of what the problem is, go ahead and paint it. If you need to tell me, go ahead and tell me. I'm listening. I don't want to hear it twice, but I do want to know what your solution is. Because I, I have problems in my life. I'm looking for solutions. I want to know what you've come up with. So I, I don't say it quite that. How, how would I say it? Uh, I'd say, tell me if you need me to hear what you have to say so I understand you. Tell me. But I am really excited. I hope we have time for your solution. I want to know what you're thinking. I have problems in my own life. I want to know what your solution is. So tell me whatever you got to tell me. Just know that I am on the edge of my seat waiting for your solution. That's probably how I'd say it. Uh, maybe. So I, I don't know. People and their problems. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, like I say, I'm not going to sit and complain about a lady that that you know, wants me to go sell her stuff, but isn't willing to, you know, make an appointment. I, I'm not going to complain about that. I'm just, I think I'm just going to cancel the appointment and tell, tell the lady, look, sorry, lady, uh, I'm busy today. You didn't tell me anything was sure. So, uh, me going wasn't sure. If you can promise me that you're going to make time, then I will go. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe I feel like going on a random motorcycle ride anyway. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll be as committal as you are. And I'm not going to point the finger. I'm just going to be done with it. I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to be done and I'm going to move on. And I'm going to try to keep thinking about happy, positive things. Really, I, you know, I was just talking this morning with one of my good buddies, Noah Moss. He's starting this AaronYoung.com. Uh, it's a, well, you need to see it. Aaron Young, Y-O-N-G-E, of course. And we were, he was telling me, you know, I, there, he said, I've got Christians talk to me all over the place. They're so depressed about life. And I said, really? Okay. I asked him, is there a common thread here? He said, yeah, they all go to Sunday morning. I said, well, there, there you go. And he read my article since I quit Sunday morning, I think, or something like that. So I don't, you know, if, if you're unhappy, you're trying to figure out why, I guess. I don't know. But... I'm going to focus on the good things. And I've got an interesting idea that I want to share with you. And so I'm just going to get to the point. We easily presume that survival requires certain instituted structures and systems to overstay their welcome. But that's mere nostalgia. Institutions, though necessary, are less necessary than we think. That which is erected by man will always be outlived by man. When society does things in a better way, that better way will always downsize some jobs, but many more work opportunities will spring up in their places. Better and better systems will be invented by the synergistic combination of opportunity and necessity. In that process, humanity sheds institutions as a snake sheds its skin. Life always finds a way. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.